the solo tutorial segment I decided to run uh, to help some some uh, beginning techniques get the hang of some more intermediate techniques and just concepts of modeling in Maya so in Maya uh, first there's a few things you'd like to set up or make sure that are set up and that is the project so that everything is centralized and nothing is all over the place and then you go to file project window you want to create a new project I can name it You click this little folder in your location bar you can choose where to have it Oops, that's the wrong one. there so I think say accept and now everything will be where it was before so next once that's set you want to make sure your scene is on a real world scale so you'll go to windows up here on the top uh, settings preferences and then down to preferences don't know why that wasn't really checked this menu so just going to go to settings and then make sure this is set to centimeters if I'm not mistaken one centimeter is one unit in a meter I might be mistaken but I don't think I am Let's go over some real quick basics. Uh, moving around in Maya, you can use your mouse wheel to dolly back and forth between in and out. You can do the same by holding Alt and then right click. And that does this for you. And then left click selects. And middle mouse, oh sorry, Alt and left click is the rotate. Alt and middle click is the pan and it lets you drag around the screen like that. Super basic. And uh, it's the easiest to control out of all the programs I've used. So we know we want to make this tutorial um, something similar like this style. nice and basic so it's not too daunting so what we're going to do is space bar there's a couple ways to do almost everything in Maya if you want to create an object you can go up here to the modeling menu on the left side modeling create polygon and you want to make sure interactive creation is turned off create a plane nice and easy there it is uh, by default I think the plane is 10 on 10 and it comes in like this if that's the case delete it go back create plane this little settings bar and 
change this to one. Alternatively, if you don't want to do it that way, you can select the object, click on polyplane, and this is where those numbers are here in the channel box editor. You can just select these two ones. Now we want to give this a new material in order to put our reference image inside this new material. Uh, so we can go, we can right click the object, we can select it, we can left click, then right click, hold it down, we go all the way down to assign new material, except we just need to use your basic find it assign favorite, find it, and let go. And there's the object. So now here we can click on the object on the attribute editor on the right hand side here. There's the uh, object, the shape of the object, and the material that we select. Select it, drag it into there, click on this checker point, and then color our common attribute here, and go to width. Now we want to put a picture in it. A picture is a file, so we just click on File, and we get another menu. And in this menu, we have an open and setting color menu here. Now it's best. is in the source images folder of your project so uh, wherever you save images or references or textures to put on the material make sure that they are into the images folder here in our material. And once that's on, if we select the object again, we can see this little arrow with the black box. That means something is in inside of there, driving the attribute. And we can just press 6 on the keyboard. And that will give us the object, the texture can view in the scene here. Now, it's a little skewed, so that's why I have the picture in Photoshop. If you look at the image stack, I just did that by pressing Control Shift R. I'm sorry, Control Alt R. You see it's 720 pixels by 495. So here, I have changed 720 by 495. Oops, 495. And there's the proper size of the photograph, the proper scale of the photograph. And now I can scale it uniformly to correct. Really simply for controlling and manipulating an object. Uh, Q is your selection tool. W is your move tool when you have an object selected. Uh, e is your rotate tool. And R is your scale tool.
get started here, we know we need a vertical pillar. Now, to move, okay, we have uh, pretty general forms of they all have little intricacies to them for instance this one the pillars are the same width all the way up but this one they are slanted all the way up These ones have like a little cement cut up from the bottom one. So we want to choose one, and I believe we're going with Slavka Sai to mimic this. And that's uh, just a cylinder really, so let's start off really basic. I'm going to teach you to shortcut uh, this going up here to this menu is extremely costly. If you hold spacebar, you get all the menu options uh, underneath the map. And here is the top main menu, the set of the tool set you're in. If you hit spacebar, create, it's the same as going over here and going create. So let's create a cylinder. And it's super simple from here. We just uh, make it really big. We grab this object and I can uh, center my view on it by pressing F as in frame and then I just press R to bring up the scale tool and I stretch it. Uh, it's not this dense in the middle. The feather is probably pretty fat so instead of like individually trying to scale it wider, we can do it uniformly. If you have this tool, you can grab this middle, middle uh, scale and just undoing with control V. You can grab the middle one and uniform scale it. Desired width, you can then make it bigger. Like so. And that's a cylinder. That's one pillar. Super simple. Uh, however, we need two. So, in order to get two, you can simply Press Control D, and that duplicates. Uh, you can also just go to Edit, Duplicate, but shortcuts make everything better, trust me. So make a duplicate, go over here. You can go one step further by
Use this one as well. Let's duplicate this plane here and then right click it. And the duplicate is Control D. You're going to right click, go favorite, continue. You're going to give it a numbered again. This time, we're going to put on. to change the camera view so we can align the supplements within the space bar. Click right on the point here and it gives you a point view. Uh, conversely, if you're just in the menu here on the menu perspective, if you just press space bar, it gives you perspective, side, in the middle of our, our screen here. We can snap it in the middle, very center. Pressing spacebar and another viewport, it full screens that viewport. So this way, if I bring from the front, I am sewing it over. I can move it up. And now, instead of scaling it down and trying to get it to fit properly on two different sides, the top and bottom, something else. If you hold right click, you can start to select individual components of a piece of geometry. So when you have it selected, let's just demo this real quick. You can select edges, vertex, face. These three are the main ones you're going to use. Uh, very rarely will you use anything else. So an edge is obviously this blue line. It's what connects two vertex points. A vertex, if you hold right click on the object, or well, any object, and you go to vertex, and then like this, you get to select vertex points. Let's do little pink. This is one single point in space. Now it has two, and it has two, we have connected, so we have an edge. And then when three or more are connected, you get a face. So if you right click, scroll down, you get a face. You can then select the face of an object. So going back to the point view, space bar, hold down, the vertex 
and in Catherine Eisler. And let's pull this down. Take it if you want. Just like that. Right, let's first get this shape in here. And then I can bend the stuff out of the proper dimension. So change the shape of the object, but the pivot point stayed in the center. So I now want to scale this e evenly, equally, but it's, it's off-center, so I need to center the pivot. To get that, you just go to Select the Object. center pivot. And that will center the object once more. And I'm just going to make these a little fatter. So I grab, I, I have the right size now that I want. I have the right size. It's just going to stick as I do this, it's going to get taller. And if I have this selected, and I, I hold control, and select the dimension, the axis, that I don't want it to move on, I can cancel that axis out and just make it thicker and thinner. duplicate it from the front view. You see how it is over here. Instead of dragging it over and, and finding the right point, I can eyeball the exact opposite. We can duplicate it. And if you notice this arrow in red, it's because it's the X axis. So if I grab this, x-axis over to the right. The pillar is currently sitting at minus 157.233 from zero. Here's zero. Or whatever I still need to be. So if we just change this to positive, here we go. It's the exact size on the other side. And I need that two pillars, so I'm going to cancel this as well. So that's how you'll get the spider stuff to figure out where this goes. I will go over a couple things now to help my quality of life. Every Maya comes with a custom shell. If you see our upper above all these, there's part of our buttons moving. There's a custom shell, and it's probably black. We just um, find tools that we'll use a lot. I myself use copy or stinker pivot a lot. So if you modify, find a tool you want, center pivot, you just press control shift and left click that and it will stay on your shell plane. For instance, we'll have a fire center pivot. There it is. Now that's extra so I'll just move it over. And 
that way. Let's see my pivot point is is off. It's completely skewed. I can just go over here to my custom chart, center pivot. And uh, that way I don't have to go through a bunch of names to uh, do something really expensive. So we've got duplicating, reusing, and there are other ways to know which I'll show you. Um, we've got the custom shell. We run over previews. We run over component, face, vertex, edges. Now let's try to get the, let's just make these the black width here in this photograph it's uh, it's not as big as this one uh, but that's okay we can still make a little bit of one because we've got to think of it in the real sense in the real sense is going to be something there in the real sense of here here it's uh, I believe this is painted on so there wouldn't be one Here is a whole different decoration there. There's one here, this lower level, where we have a little bit. And some of them have, uh, some of them have like metal. Oh, here's one. A metal cage lock lamp. So I think we'd like, let's just make something similar to this, but instead of a short, thick one, let's do a long, a long one. So this one's taller. We can change that later. It's just to make this one, to get the idea there. Let's make uh, half of this to get the ideas down, and then we'll start making the rest of them. We want to extrude now, so uh, we know that this array needs uh, some sort of indentation in there. So we need to add an edge loop, and to do that, we can. mesh tool all the way down to insert edge loop and now here you can select where you want it to go so let's go here you just left click and drag it on the on your object and that gives you get an extrusion so that it pops out like that you just select your faces auto right click go down go to face and you want to select all these faces and then you go back to edit mesh and you extrude we can drop that on our custom shell just so we can use an arrow to go through now you get this weird new uh, 
fidget as move and stretch and rotate all in one. Uh, but very simply, we're going to use, I mean, you can use the Triangle C, I also like to use. These, if you just click the name and then drag your mouse, you can get its thickness and then that way you can get something more precise with your left. If you control click this, it does it in a more fine tuned sense. So it does it in smaller increments which gives you a cleaner choice. So let's trim it out like that. And then you can see here, we have the top of that little deck there. Now to get it to drop off like this, we're very simple. We go left click, edge. We're just gonna grab that outer edge there select your up and down arrow and just pull it down a bit there you go nice and easy uh, the problem with this is let's say you're gonna render this the very last part of this is to render in a PDF and your camera goes like this People are going to see this on a full 1080p HD screen. And they're going to see this really sharp edge here. Nothing in the world is that sharp. Not even knives. Uh, so what you want to do is select the edge. If you double click on edge, it gives you the edge ring. The full edge loop. Grab the whole thing, double click, and then edit mesh, and you want to bevel it. That'll give you this, it'll split the edge evenly or in the two different degrees that it sits on and give you two separate edges, which you can then use this little menu to change beveled it is and we don't need even we don't even need to do anything beyond that that's a clean enough that's that's clean enough but you can also add segments to make it nice and round uh, it all depends what you need it for I myself probably wouldn't do anything more than one so do that there and I want this one, but I want the same. So let's control Z. And if, if we grab both ones, you can control, you can double click, hold shift to keep your old selection and add to your new selection, double click. And we can perform the bevel again. Edit mesh, bevel gives us the exact same thing but let's uh, now we can do both of them at the same time we'll do that there we go and all that does is help the light properly transition in and out of the really quickly it'll help give us this highlight feeling same thing up here. I'll show you another method of extruding. Instead of adding an edge loop, instead of going like this, you can simply select all the faces you want to extrude 
selection, make sure you don't have as a proxy. So to get rid of the selection, if you hit control, you can just get rid of whatever you want. Shift, you know, add and exclude. Select the places you want to extrude and we want to then move up to get this um, R drift, you know, these top cross beams sit down. So we're going to use our extrude that we put on our shell. We edit mesh, extrude. And now we want to give us our thickness. Sorry. We want. Give yourself an extrude. You can change the thickness using your front camera. You can get a nice glossy style thick, it should be. And then we also want to get it out. So we'll have to grab the faces that would pull it out. You can grab the arrow if you want. This is going to be super annoying. So I'm going to grab it. So we have our top bound. Now, uh, again, we want to pull this up a little bit. And we're going to bevel this. And we'll bevel this one. So double click, shift, double click, shift, double click. And then just use your edit mesh, bevel. And that will give you the same menu again. Let's tighten that a bit. There we go. And now, now. Select it, press Control D to duplicate, push this minus, and push F. And there we go. And we'll press the start to retire it. And I'll put the rest of the video in later. If you'd like, you can um, keep going and then video I can follow along and see how I did but I um, hope you have a nice uh, tomorrow probably thanks and let me know if, if there's something you want me to go over that we did today like this and again maybe I'll when I decide I should edit it I've never made a tutorial video so I hope this is okay <laughs> so thank you and before I grab it. I'm going to save it. Always save.